What's up everybody, Kyle here. And today we're taking a look at the 2020 Bowman Draft um, Autograph Checklist for Hitters. And I am going to evaluate these guys similarly to what I did with the 2021 draft in my last video. We're taking a look at just the stats-based evidence that we're seeing up until the All-Star break. And I did compile this data um, over the past two days, so I am two games behind. You know, and today's date is uh, July 15th, so any games that got played in the last two days, I probably don't have these stats on here. What I'd like to do is at the end of the season, I'll do a similar video with these same guys. And we'll kind of see, you know, if they stayed consistent, because a lot of them are, are their small sample sizes. And um, we'll take a look at this one right now up until the All-Star break. And how I did it, I did it a little differently than my last video. Um, I'm sticking with the tier system, but I did this one in Excel. So I was able to use some formulas for stats that I like to use um, as far as evaluating guys. And um, I sorted by uh, tier. And I've got five guys in the top tier, which is tier seven. I've got two guys in the, uh, tier six and three guys in tier five. And all of these players in tier seven through five are having tremendous seasons. And there's some specific details that separates them for me just a little bit. Um, we can't we can't argue the evidence that we have here, but we could argue where I uh, rank these guys in their tiers because um, there may be some different differing opinions on that. But um, in this top tier here, I've got in uh, red. There are five players, and we're going to start with Jordan Walker, who is off to an amazing season. He was recently promoted to high A. And uh, most of his stats are coming from um, single A ball, but he's only 19. He's a really big kid. Uh, he's hitting for average. His ISO P is um, 255. He's had six home runs, and uh, his K rate is pretty low for playing at such a high level. E even though you know most of his stats are from A ball, he's still only 19. Um, and ISO P here is isolated power, and it's one of the stats I really like. I used um, OPS on the last video, but I went with ISOP on this video because it shows um, how they hit for extra base hits. It basically takes all the singles out of their average, and um, it calculates their batting average with extra base hits as opposed to singles. So it shows that there's some juice in the bat. Um, the next guy we're looking at is Tyler Soderstrom. With the Oakland A's organization, he's been um, he played the Futures game uh, over the All Star break, and um, you know he's in Single A. He's hitting 320 with a 264 ISOP. He's got 10 home runs, and his K rate's a little higher than Walker's, but um, he does have four more home runs, and uh, he's he's playing tremendously well offensively. Uh, the thing with Soderstrom is his defensive abilities that may um, slow him down on the fast track. I would really love to see the A's put him in left field and just let him swing the bat, you know, and see how far he can go, how quickly. But um, I think their plan right now is to try to develop him as a catcher. So we'll see how that kind of pans out in the next uh, one or two years, you know, because his offense is, is taken off. Uh, a third um, tier seven player is Garrett Mitchell who is an offensive powerhouse. I think he'll be a, a, a prototypical leadoff hitter. Um, and you can see here, he's got 12 bags. He's 22, he's playing in double A. He's hitting uh, 313. His ISO P isn't excellent, but it's not bad. Um, anything above 200 is pretty decent. Anything above like 250 is really impressive. Um, so, you know, he's kind of in the good range right there with extra base hits. Uh, he's had five home runs. His strikeout rate is a little high. Um, it's, it's the second highest on anybody on this list. But, you know, it's his first year, and he's in double A. So um, I can understand, you know, it's going to be a small adjustment to get used to, uh, to, get used to pitching in double A in your first year of pro ball. 
But um, he's just an offensive machine. Uh, he's a great fantasy pickup, you know, because he's going to do it all. He's going to hit for average. He's going to have a little bit of power. He's going to have enough power, you know, to, to make him a great player. And he's going to steal bags, um, possibly a 2020 guy, you know. But uh, somebody to look out for next year is Garrett Mitchell. Alec Burleson kind of came out of nowhere from this product. I know when it first released, you know, 2020 draft release, nobody was talking about Alec Burleson, but he's a first baseman in the Cardinals organization. And um, he's got 16 home runs right now, and he is uh, he has the most home runs of any player in this product. Um, Jesse Franklin's in a close second. But he's also hitting for average, which is really impressive. He's got a 303 batting average. He's got 16 home runs. Um, his ISOP is above 200. His K rate could improve a little bit, but if you're gonna if you're gonna show that much power, um, I, I could stand a, a, a 25% K rate. Um, he's not gonna he's not gonna tear up the bases. He's a first baseman. His bat's gonna have to play. But um, he's having a tremendous year kind of out of nowhere. So uh, Alec Burleson may be a guy to look at and, um, and pick up, you know, if you, if you think he's going to be able to perform uh, in the future. Robert Hassel is my last Tier 7 guy, and um, he's another 19-year-old in A-ball. He's not hitting above 300. He has a low ISOP. Um, but what I really like about Hassel is the fact that he has 20 stolen bases and his K rate is uh, 20%. And, um, you know, it's his first year of pro ball. He's playing, he's 19, he's an, he's an A ball. And um, it's, it's pretty impressive. It's pretty impressive stuff, you know. And I think, I think the frame will fill out the physicality, you know, will grow for uh, Hassel. He's, he's a smaller wiry kid right now, but uh, I think that's going to project into some more power. So, um, you know, Hassel's a guy I could have maybe put as a tier six, you know, but I just like him a lot. I like his youth and I like his uh, his approach at the plate and his speed. So we could be looking at a speed power guy here. Um, and here's a name that everyone is familiar with. He was the big chaser in uh, this product, Spencer Torkelson. And um, he was really expensive coming out of this product, and he's having a really good year. Um, it, it's really hard to live up to the hype sometimes, you know, that gets put on these players. But Torkelson's having a great year. He's 21. He's in double A. He's hitting for average. He's got a 284 ISO P, and that is the second highest, I think, on this list. Um, there may be, no, Xavier Warren was the highest, but he's not hitting for any average, and he's He's way, way, way too old for his level. But um, Torque is the third highest ISO P on this list. He's got 12 home runs. His strikeout rate is so low. It's 20%. So, I mean, that bat is playing really well in double A right now. And he's 21. So, um, you know, the hype, like I said, it's so hard to live up to. But Torkelson's having a great year. Really impressed with what he's done. Um, and another guy, Jesse Franklin, and you know, some of y'all could argue that this guy should be a tier seven right now because he's doing almost everything well. Um, he's 22. He's in high A. I would love to see Jesse Franklin in double A, see what he can do at that level because he's a little old for high A. And um, he's not hitting for great average. But the power's there. He's got 14 home runs. He's second on this list in home runs. And his ISOP is almost 300, which is unbelievable. That's incredible. A 296 ISOP. So the dude is just hitting balls everywhere to gaps. He's hitting balls over the fence. Um, the power is there. And he's got 15 bags, which is really impressive also. So... Um, Here's another guy that could be a 2020 guy, easy in the power department. Um, but his K rate's a little high, and he is playing in high A. So hopefully this K rate right here does not um, jump when he goes to double A. Hopefully he can kind of keep that in check, and it doesn't uh, doesn't hold him back at all. But Jesse Franklin's having a great year out of nowhere also, because there were only a couple guys chasing Franklin out of, the, out of release that I saw. Um, and he has blown up, man. He's having a great year. 
These three guys are tier five. Um, Jordan Westberg kind of came out of nowhere. I had my eye on Westberg um, earlier in the product, and I, and I got wrapped up in chasing some other guys, and I never really bought any. But um, he's having a really good year. He's a shortstop in the Orioles organization. He's hitting for a lot of average. You know, ISO P, he's not hitting for a ton of power. He's only got six home runs and 206 at-bats. But he's got 12 bags. He plays a premium position. And um, he's hitting 316. The strikeouts, I can live with. But he's another guy like Franklin that, that when he gets to double A, he's going to have to um, he's going to have to either see that number stay or see that number decrease because um, we don't want to get much higher than 25 in the strikeout department if we're only going to hit six home runs. So I'd like to see what Westberg can do in double A. That's why he's a tier five right now. Um, it's why Franklin is a tier six because I'd like to see what he's in double A, what he does in double A. Um, Zach Deloach is another guy that very few are chasing outside of this product. He's 22 in a Seattle organization. He's in high A also. And, you know, the reason he <clears throat> is a tier five and not a tier six is, is just the age to level. I, you know, I, I really like to see guys that are 21 in high A, not 22. I'd like to see what they can do in double A, um, especially when these guys are putting up such good numbers. But he's hitting 304. He's got an um, ISO P similar to Westberg. You know, he's not going to hit for a ton of power, a ton of pop. He's got six home runs and 227 at-bats, and he's only got six bags. So it's a very similar um, offensive profile to Westberg, just um, not as many stolen bases. He doesn't have the wheels that Westberg does. And uh, the fifth guy, <clears throat> tier five guy we've got here is A.J. Bokovich. Another name that kind of came out of nowhere with this product. He's a corner infielder in the Arizona Diamondbacks organization. He's 19 in A-ball. He's hitting a 262. Um, his ISO P is above two, so that's great. He's got nine home runs and 191 at-bats in six bags. But um, the one thing I do not like about uh, the Boca pitch right now is his strikeout rate. Um, I think that's what's keeping him in the tier five zone for me is I'd like to see these strikeouts um, come down a little bit and make more, more consistent contact because you can see the contact that he's making with nine home runs and a, you know, 204 ISO P is hard contact. So um, if he could, if he could increase his contact rate, it's going to help him out tremendously, but um, he came out of nowhere. There were a lot of surprises, and you know, um, I've got this whole this whole PDF I'll post on my Patreon page, you know, and you guys can uh, sort it out and, you know, alter it to however you want, but I've, I've got this information for everybody on the checklist, and there were a lot of surprises on this list. Um, you know, Trevor Hover started out incredibly hot. He was, he was white hot out of the gate. Um, he led the minor leagues in home runs for, for a week or two. But he's a guy that needs to be moved up. You know, he shouldn't be 22 in, in A ball. And um, I would have put him higher, <clears throat> but he's too old for his level. Colt Keith is another guy. He's young. He just doesn't hit a hit for any power. Um, I like Nick York, but he's he's got no juice right now. He's young. You know, Colt Keith and, and Nick York are both young. And Drew Romo is a guy that I like. And they're all tier four guys. Um Zach Veen is struggling a little bit this year. He was a hot chase out of the gate. He's hitting 250, but he's got 26 bags. He's the, uh, the stolen base leader in this product with 23 or 26 stolen bags. And Workman's got 23. He's in second place um, on bags. But they're, um, you know, Veen's not hitting for a lot of pop. He's got four home runs, 200 at bats. He's still got a lot of growth to do. He's struggling this year, which was a surprise for me. Um, Foscu has been he's been battling some injuries. So um, I think he's back to uh, high A right now. I think he was at the rehab, doing the rehab stand at the complex league for a while. Um, Nick Gonzalez is probably the biggest surprise on this list. Uh, he's really struggling right now. He's 22. He's in high A. Um, he's not hitting for any average. The pop's really the best thing he has going right now because he is above um, 200 on his ISO P which means he is making some pretty hard contact, but the strikeouts are pretty rampant right now. He's a 33% strikeout rate. 
And that's a little too much for me, especially being a year older than the level. So, um, you know, hopefully he can turn the second half around and we'll see what happens with uh, Nick Gonzalez. But he's a guy I like, you know, on release and he's struggling a little bit. And I think uh, the last, you know, um, the last big name on here uh, that struggled is the Austin Hendrick. And uh, he, he's striking out way too much. He's not hitting for average. Um, he's got a 36% K rate. You know, his ISOP is 1.5, which isn't great. So hopefully he can rebound. I did not include any guys that are in the complex leagues, just like the last video, because you can see they've only got, you know, I think the highest guy on here is uh, Rosario with 41 at-bats. And it's just too small of a sample size to judge these guys right now. Um, so everybody in the ACL, I did put their numbers on here. You know, their ISOPs, their K rates, and their bags. But um, I did not include them in the tier system. So um, don't get upset if you don't see a guy you like that's in the complex league and uh, he's not ranked because I didn't, I didn't include these guys. It's such a small sample size, but their, their numbers are available. You know, Pete Crow Armstrong has got the season ending injury. Kirstead's finally, um, he, he's still out. He hasn't played a game yet. So um, we'll see what happens with these guys. You know, it's halfway through the season and um, we'll see what happens in the second half of the year. Like I said, I, I have this PDF available for download on my Patreon page and the same thing with 2021 Bowman. Um, I'm going to try to do the pitchers actually out of 20 draft in my next video. I'm going to break them down and see, you know, who's performing, um, on the pitching side of things. So, uh, I hope you enjoyed this information. I hope you can use it. Um, and uh, have a great night. Check out my Patreon page. There's a lot of cool stuff on there. I put all my documents for my videos on there. And um, if you enjoy, please subscribe because I've been posting um, a lot of videos with this kind of data. So if you like this kind of thing, subscribe so you don't miss uh, what I post. And other than that, have a great night, guys. Appreciate the views.